Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to another in our series of videos looking at welfare losses and applying them to particular types of government intervention in markets. This time, indirect taxes. Well, indirect taxes are often introduced by government as a form of intervention to help correct for one or more market failures, such as externalities from production and consumption. Uh, in the following analysis, we're just going to build the diagram showing the impact of a tax on price and quantity and welfare. Uh, we leave the evaluation of taxes and things uh, for, for other videos which are in the series. Let's take the example of a government introducing a new tax on manufacturers of sugar. So S, the supply curve pre-tax is shown as is the demand curve. And initially the market for, if you like, raw sugar is in equilibrium at price P1 and Q1. Let's put some letters on the diagram, always helpful. Use letters in exams, please, rather than shaded areas. It's much neater and you become more accurate. Hopefully I've got this right. So initially, uh, consumer surplus is the area A, B, P1, the area underneath the demand curve and above the price. That's consumer surplus. A producer surplus is the area P1, B, C, the area above the supply curve and below the price. So before the tax, consumer surplus A, B, P1, producer surplus P1, B, C, giving a total economic welfare, adding producer and consumer surplus together, of area A, B, C. Now, if we impose a tax on uh, a product, the supply curve will shift upwards. I've introduced a specific tax where the tax per unit is constant. So effectively, now the firm's costs have gone up. So there's our supply post-tax. And as a result, the quantity in equilibrium will fall to Q1, uh, Q2, sorry, and the price will rise to P2. Now, keep in mind, before this tax, the total area of welfare was A, B, C, made up of consumer and producer surplus. Now let's think about what happens to the welfare as a result of the tax. I need to add some more letters. Uh, OK, so, and I've just drawn across to P3, because you see the price that consumers pay is now P2. But the government will get the tax per unit, which is DE, multiplied by the quantity Q2. So in fact, the producer will only keep price P3, Consumers pay price P2, then you take off the tax and the producer keeps price P3. So the government tax revenue is tax per unit multiplied by quantity, sorry, by quantity. And that is this area here, P2, D, E, P3, tax per unit multiplied by quantity. So what was consumer and producer surplus, a lot of it has gone to the government in the form of tax revenue. Well, consumer surplus before was A, P1, B, or A, B, P1. Now it's only A, D, P2. So there's been quite a big fall of consumer surplus uh, because of the tax. Producer surplus before the tax was area P1, B, C. Now it's P3, E, C, because they only keep uh, a lower price now, P3, E, C. That shaded area, of course, is the what was produced from consumer surplus, which now goes to the government in tax revenue. Well, that's, that leaves us with a triangle, the triangle DBE or DEB, whichever way you want to go. So area P2, DE, P3, that shaded area has gone in tax revenue to the government. This is, this is a transfer of welfare to the government. It's not a deadweight loss of welfare. Uh, whereas there is a deadweight loss of welfare shown by the area D, B, E, that triangle, D, B, E. The reason is because, of course, quantity has gone down from Q1 to Q2. And the price that consumers paid has gone up and the price that the producer keeps has gone down. So there is a deadweight loss of economic welfare due to a tax. So although an indirect tax can cause a deadweight loss of welfare, in your evaluation, you might consider the uses to which those tax revenues are put. So the government will get a sizable chunk there of tax revenue. Of course, that depends on the elasticity of demand and how high the tax is. But uh, some indirect taxes, uh, the revenues from them are earmarked or hypothecated for specific purposes. They might be used to fund sports in, in schools or health campaigns, um, which can have significant social welfare benefits over time. So you might want to think about that as part of your evaluation. But our analysis 
is there to show the welfare effects and the possible deadweight welfare loss from an indirect tax. Okay, thank you very much.